Hey everyone, welcome to this video in the KT Explained series. This series is going to be much shorter videos of kind of topics or questions I get asked quite a lot or maybe just once and I want to explain kind of a full video because I think they'll be beneficial to more than just the person who explains it. So today we're going to be talking about low competition bug hunting and what do I mean by low competition bug hunting? Uh, a lot of people have quite a lot of anxiety about, ah, oh, the pros have already found all the bugs and there's no way that I can compete. And I, I don't agree with that. I 100% think, nope, I don't think the pros have all the bugs. But I respect that that makes you anxious. And I want to talk about where you can find bugs that are a lot lower competition. So this is what I'm going to be talking about today, um, is how to basically find the bugs that nobody else is finding those unique bugs um so let's start cool the pros have all the bugs you versus the person who tells you not to worry about everyone seems to think this i don't think it's true you can definitely find bugs pros don't and not every bug can or will be automated um my first bugs were on uber and verizon which are both uh both at live events where I was competing literally with some of the best hackers in the world and both of them on targets that have public programs that already have quite a lot of people and you know what I've got four bugs there and none of them were dupes but let's talk about low competition bug hunting because it does fill people with anxiety and I think I don't agree but I'm saying that because of my experience you might not agree because that's not your experience so let's talk about low competition hunting in general so anxiety a lot of people have this anxiety that every bug has already been found um, so they should learn something really new or obscure even if it's completely above their skill level a lot of people ask me for stuff with like help with HTTP request splitting and um, cache poisoning and stuff like that when the problem is not that these bugs don't work, but it's because you're targeting something that's just above your skill level. You don't understand the bug enough to really exploit it. Um, and even if you spend a lot of time doing it, there's no point looking at HTTP cache poisoning if you don't really understand how the cache works. So I wanted to give some advice if this is specifically giving you anxiety. So let's have a chat. Um, should you go for a public or private program? private program you should look for programs with the low total bounties paid um, so this number here and this number here um, so this is a much newer bounty program than this is or it has a lot fewer lot fewer bugs but likely this is just newer um, especially if you look at you know the bound whoops the bounties paid in the last 90 days here where about half their bounties have been paid in the last three months versus this. Established program, not very established program. So newer bug bounty programs are good for looking into, um, uh, but you also need a responsive one. So you also want to be looking up here as well. So average time to bounty is important because that tells you how long if you find a bug it will take for you to get a bounty. And then here we have some like first triage and first responses with especially smaller ones you're not going to see this number being very high versus this one which is a more established program because they're just not used to it uh, same with average time to triage you can also have hacker one manage plat programs which might be a little bit better um, but this is the important one because this shows you that this program is active um, cool so that's public versus private so go for a private program look at the stats before you decide what industry um so there's quite a lot of debate actually on whether or not you should go for an industry that bug hunters are afraid of like health or um kind of industry and you shouldn't go for like tech companies um i don't agree i think you go with whatever but i will talk about this a little bit later I always recommend that if you have the option to hunt on something you already know, you should probably take it. If you know how the app is supposed to work, um, you actually have quite a big advantage because you don't have to learn those kind of business logic flows. Um, you just have to look at the hacking. Um, but there's not certain programs that are always going to be better for low competition hunting. 
Uh, I think if you are worried about this, it's far more useful to look at kind of newer programs than it is to look for specific industries. Um, so what assets should you hack? You should hack mobile apps. 100% mobile apps. It's harder, it's a pain in the ass to set up, but there are less people doing it. Um, Android is obviously more popular and easier to set up. Uh, and you can even do it entirely on an emulator, even if you don't have an Android device. Less people do iOS overall. You need an iOS device and you need to be able to jailbreak it. But if you can do that and if you can get that working, that will give you such an edge because nobody's doing it. Like, if you want to talk about kind of like a pyramid or an upside down kind of pyramid here, this is the web. There's many people hacking just the web. Then over here, you have Android. And then down here you have iOS. Now, if you're targeting this bucket here, you're already competing with like 10% of the people you compete with with web, right? And Android, you're somewhere in the middle, maybe it's like 50 to 40%. But that's significantly smaller competition, um, right? Because this one you've got if you've got 100 people, you've got 50 or 40 people, then you've got 10 people doing iOS. Um, and you don't need to do anything special. The bare minimum you need to hack uh, mobile apps and find bugs is just get burp running. Whatever it takes. Jailbreaking, SSL, pinning bypasses, routing your device, that is the start. So what technique should I learn? Just in general. Right, get burp working. Step one. You've got to get burp working on your device. You've got to be able to see mobile traffic on burp. Um, I'm actually going to do a bit of a tutorial on this, on how to get it working, but there's quite a lot of those already out there, so you can go and watch those videos. <laughs> um, Space Raccoon has a great, vid a great article on how to get it working for um, iOS, and some people in my Discord actually had one for Android, so I'm going to share that below. Um, how to use free to trace now this is a video from bug crowds level up i know right me advertising fucking bug, bug crowd um, and this is done by my friend dawn and it is such a good video just watch this presentation dawn did for bug crowd it's so good she's an incredible like security person um she's on the i forgot the name of the team yeah it's gone she's on this she's on like a bug hunting team um right now so she's incredible and she's so good at mobile mobile app hacking um so if you watch her video you can learn about frida and how that works um but that's the next thing to learn so how frida works specifically frida trace and how you can use that to find xss on mobiles um and then writing exploits so this also involves usually frida um, and how to write an exploit is a key step for any bug hunter. From mobile, being able to write like a really nice mobile exploit, especially something like XSS, because you can get XSS working on mobile, that can set you apart from the competition massively. Because if you think of that, like that step one, that step two, that step three, people will stop here on step one. You don't have to continue like hunting on step one if it's not something you know you don't want to learn Frida because you find it really confusing you can stop there if you get to step three you are like really you're you're not you're in this little triangle here and then you are just you're in this part of the triangle right this is our wider kind of bug hunting triangle with web and if you're doing iOS stuff, if you can get to step three and write exploits, you are here. You are like 1%, right? That's how you get those really nice no competition bugs. Right, what bugs to look for? Idols. Look for idols. They're still, for the most part, hunted manually. There are some automated tools, honestly, like most of the like, really good bug hunting people I've already spoken to um, tell me, actually... Um, I just look for idols ma manually, just one by one check them. Um, you don't need to use the, the automated tools. Stoke has a really good video on the how to use Autorize, but don't worry about it. 
Uh, and when I say PI, you just go through each endpoint one at a time. Simple, you, you're in a low competition space because you can't automate this. It's not like people have scanners running for idols because it's a lot harder to automate. So how do you hunt for idols like a pro? You find an endpoint. Does it work for you if you completely remove a cookie? Does it work for you if you replace a cookie with one from another user? Does it work if you replace a cookie from one user with a different privilege level? That's it. You check those three things. One, two, three, next endpoint. One, two, three, next endpoint. One, two, three, next endpoint. Now, do you have to hunt iDoors and mobile and mobile apps? No, these are basically, you know, if these aren't like combine these together and do all of them. These are things to consider if you want to do low competition bug hunting. So, um, what else? Take notes. Uh, the more you hunt bugs, the more you'll see similar bugs. Simple. How did you find it? Uh, what were the steps you took? Even if you have like a half baked bug and you're not sure what to do next. Um, just kind of keep that in mind and go, okay, um, I've got this far on this bug and it seems suspicious, but I don't really know what I can do with it. Use data. So Hacker One publishes quite a lot of statistics about their stuff. And I think Bug Crowd does the same thing. You can then look and go, okay, you know what? I'm looking in healthcare and actually the most common bug is cross-site scripting and information disclosure. So those are the bugs I should be looking at, and then I should be looking at, you know, SQL injection down here. I shouldn't even be looking at code injection because that's only 1%, right? And again, you want to be going, you know, I'm looking at, uh, you know, transportation, and really most of them are cross-site scripting and information disclosure. This is much lower. So... If I'm looking for idols and I'm looking on healthcare, actually it's 10% of the bugs there and 5% there. So being able to know, you know, what people are looking for when they do these kinds of things, you know, it, depending on what industry you're hacking, what bugs are you going to find there? This is the answer, right? This is some, this is some big brain level stuff. Um... And then the other one is just try. You're not going to get bugs by complaining that all of the bugs are gone. Somebody else is, who's not thinking that is just going to do it. Just go hack something. Just go, go hack something. It's, it's, I keep telling my, telling you guys this and still you say, oh, all the bu bugs are gone. All the bugs are not gone. You're fine. <laughs> if you never hack, of course you'll never find any bugs. You've got to put yourself out there. Sounds like I'm giving you dating advice, but it's fine. Right. So thank you for watching this video. I hope the advice on low competition bug bounty hunting has been useful for you. I hope that this has been a kind of useful video and is giving you some ideas i'm going to put links again in the description if you want to learn more um but you know all the bugs are not gone really people are getting into bug bounty hunting all the time but if you keep on having an attitude that all of the bugs are gone and you know like nothing's you're never gonna find one you're never going to put yourself, like, do enough work to get there. You're going to stop at stage one and go, well, obviously, Space Raccoon has been here, so therefore all of the bugs are gone. Pros miss things all the time. They honestly do. They, they think in a very different way to the way that you might think as a beginner. And that's actually a, an a, um, advantage as a beginner, because... You don't find bugs by being the same as everybody else. You find them by thinking in a different way. Um, for example, I was speaking or I was listening to a presentation from on Facebook and they said that in India, uh, I think it, women wasn't, weren't using profile pictures. Um, but this was like an India only problem. And they did research and said that, you know, Indian women were, run, were worried about security concerns with their profile picture. Uh, but actually, as they were American, they really didn't understand why and really respect that uh, issue because they just, in their worldview, it was like, yes, yeah, fine, pictures on Facebook is normal. 
So actually coming from a different perspective and different point of view, you can really add something to the debate around security um, and find unique bugs that nobody else has found before. So please don't, please don't look and go, I can't find anything. I'm done. I'm going to have to learn something really obscure. Please don't do that. You can you can take simple stuff. You just need to put in the effort. Like there are no bugs that are just going to fall out of trees just for you. You need to put in the effort to find them. And if you do put in the effort, you will find them. I promise. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>